the, the kids who graduate, who really graduate, to be able to use the computer because on the market <laughs> it is Microsoft. So there has been an um, uh, accusation of uh, some, in some countries, actually, accusation that uh, ah, you need your school, you have Microsoft. In our school that are poor, you, you, are, you are having free software. It's when, when we finish, we cannot get a job. So it's, it's my point. So that, you, you, the thing that you, you need to look at, to look at uh, bo bo both, uh, both sides. Uh, I've been asked those questions uh, several times, but I think that uh, Microsoft has, has been making a difference, actually, uh, with the, what they call the e-school uh, in Africa. Uh, it is a, a, an initiative for NEPAD. NEPAD is the new, uh, mm. new, uh, develop, new economic development. Yes, <laughs> new partnership for Africa's development. The intention is that for the next 10 years to have all 200,000 secondary schools in Africa to be connected. They have already started with some schools in Africa. And Microsoft is, is pretty much involved in that, I think. Uh, Bill get donated something around 50 million towards uh, doing that, what they call partnership in learning. So that's something that uh, it is there that is being used. Uh, of course, as you said, the more computer you have, the cost goes up. So the Rwanda Information Technology Authority actually wrote to me, so they, 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 give, me, they give us an advice how to go with the, the free software. One thing that teaches the issue, the issue of integration uh, getting computers in. You see, <laughs> there are two things. The issue, can you learn how to ride a bicycle without a bicycle? It can just be theory. I can, I can put a bicycle there and teach you how to, to ride it. If you don't have the bicycle, you cannot ride it. You cannot how to learn it. So the first thing actually is to access the computer, to access the hardware in, in front of you so you can learn. Now, the other issue of integration, the issue of uh, that comes later on. But the first thing is the access to the computer. Now, once we have access to the computer, if you don't have access to internet, it's like, a, like having a car in your parking lot with, with a, without a road. If you don't have a road, you, just, uh, you are in the parking, you can just, just ride in, you can just drive in your parking. If you have a road, then that, that becomes the internet. You can have access to, to the knowledge, being able to exchange, etc. So that's, the next step becomes actually the connectivity, so that we, we are dealing with those issues um, well, one by one, one step by one step, so we move that. The issue, uh, the, the question from uh, the Botswana person, uh, actually the Rwanda has just established a, an agency for extension. So that agency will deal specifically with extension. How do you use what comes from the research, what comes from the academia, actually to help the farmers, the issue of uh, increased yield, etc., the issue of uh, irrigation, the issue of... Uh, Rwanda actually has water, but Rwandese don't have access to water. Actually, in one of the, the driest regions in, in, in Rwanda, called Ubugesera, actually the Akanyaru, the, the river that goes to, to the Nile, passes there. They see the river passing there at uh, three, four, five kilometers, but still their farm is, is dry. How do you bring water to that particular... Uh, place. So that becomes a challenge is what the professor talked about, the issue of community attachment, the issue of uh, actually rolling, uh, rolling out what, what, what you call appropriate technologies in, in, the rural, in the rural area. Yeah, thank you. Just, just, just one to add what the minister said, the issue of empowering women. We do realize that uh, in my institution, we don't have as many women in the area of science and technology. So we decided to find a way of empowering uh, the young girls. So we have agreed with the, with, the, with the minister, and also with the World Bank, and also with the African Development Bank, to give us some funds to take those girls who could not qualify to enter the university in the area of science and technology. We bring them in, and we really train them for one year, more physics, more mathematics, more chemistry, and then we give them an exam at the end of the, of the year. And that's where we're going to get more girls coming into higher education. Because you find that the girls' environment does not encourage them to study. Even in the institution, when you bring them up into my institution, you really have to put them in a better environment than what is happening. Things like hostel. If a girl doesn't have a bed in the hostel, 
they will end up staying with their relatives, friends, and whatever. And when they stay with the relatives, I'm telling you, they are going to use them as house girls in the evening to support, to cook, to fetch water, to uh, all sorts of things. And that way, it's not the very best environment to really encourage a girl to study in the area of science and technology. So hostels becomes very critical. We are putting up now a hostel. I've just written a project proposal. The president of the World Bank came to visit us. When military took over, he came within a, a week or two, and they visited my institution. One of the, those are the key things which we discussed with him, and they agreed to give us some funds. And I've given a, a project proposal to really uh, empower girls. And not only that, we have also our Center for Innovation and Technology Transfer, which deals with, um, uh, it, which has a department of empowering women in different technologies. You can imagine, in Rwanda, like a lot of African countries, uh, fruits are seasonal, uh, vegetables are seasonal, and everything is seasonal. If you get somebody to give them capacities which doesn't need much uh, training, but to be able to produce uh, juice, to be able to produce tomato puree, to be able to produce tomato sauce from the tomatoes. And these are simple technologies which you can do like a, a cottage industry type of training. And you need the pots and pans and cooking and give them the capacities to produce juice and jam and tomatoes and so on. You are really empowering those women in the rural areas who no, cannot even get one dollar a day. But if you give them that type of skills, you should be able to sell jams, you should be able to, to sell juice. Uh, the type of cottage industry which you see in India employing about 60 uh, 60% of the people. So that's the type of things which we are doing, and uh, that way we can empower the girls in the rural area. At the same time, you empower the girls to come to study in the area of science and technology. Thank you. It's very comprehensive, isn't it? Uh, wouldn't it be nice in this country if we had some of those percentages of uh, women there? And Audrey's definitely <laughs> nodding there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we've been working on here is uh, a, a program to enhance access to teacher education uh, for uh, less represented populations. So it is something we need to pay attention to because, as you say, they come from a different context and they can't uh, come into education in the same way. I'd like to bring in a, our... Uh... Yeah, I have really a question more than a, a, a contribution here. Uh, the uh, numbers that the uh, professor and the uh, uh, minister has shared with us, particularly with regards to uh, providing you know, uh, access to education you know, to, to the young people, you know, uh, two million in the uh, elementary school and onwards. Uh, so you know, within the next 10 years, you know, we'll have a fairly uh, uh, educated workforce. Uh, what is the role of the uh, uh, Ministry of Education uh, with regards to, for example, business education? Because you need the private sector to create jobs for these people who are coming out from the school systems. In other words, you know, uh, the, the, the growth of the private sector is just as important uh, as manpower training because the goal, of, the goal of manpower training is to prepare young people you know, for jobs. And if the jobs are not there, uh, then the whole, the whole uh, purpose is defeated. Uh, so the point is, you know, what particular role uh, does the uh, uh, educational enterprise uh, see for itself uh, in providing the, uh, the training uh, for, for business. business. Yeah, for, in business, business, you know, for private sector. Right. Okay. Um, I would like to thank you. Uh, actually, I'm going to, to, to respond in another way. When we did the, the science and technology policy, uh, actually, it has four objectives, and one of them is the technology transfer. The issue of transferring the technology to various sectors of the economy, and in particular, uh, the issue of uh, establishing uh, business center, technology business centers uh, throughout throughout the country. That is something that we are. Uh, it's 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 it's, uh, it's in the in the policy, uh, and also the issue of issue of entrepreneurship. That issue also is is being uh, considered very very seriously. Also, uh, the other objective is the issue of innovation. That also is, is part, of the, part of the policy. And also, uh, for example, KIST and the other institutions now are encouraged to, to establish incubators. Uh, he can talk about what they are doing exactly. Uh, we have uh, uh, CITT, 
uh, Center for uh, Innovation and Technology Transfer. I can give you some examples of how actually they are, they are working on the issue of creation of jobs. But at the same time, also, when we, we start this, uh, uh, the computerization of secondary schools, actually, the president and the government, the intention was actually to bring the telecommunication businesses, actually, or, or infrastructure to the country. The first contract that was signed with the, 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 the company that bought our uh, national telecommunication company was the, with the Ministry of Education. So the, the, the first fiber optic that was actually laid out was an agreement between the Ministry of Education and that company, that uh, American company that has uh, arrived as established in Rwanda. Now that is going to, to, to bring uh, another, for example, the, the, we, were, we were using G, GSM for, the, for, for the, 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 the mobile. Now we are going to use uh, CDMA. CDMA. So it changes completely. So actually in the country we're going to have two ways, okay? Two possibilities, which is actually the first in Africa and also actually, actually in the region. So, so Ministry of Education works very closely with, uh, with, uh, with the businesses. Uh, but the uh, professor can say exactly what yeah. he, they, they do okay. for, for his institution. Quickly, <clears throat> I didn't say it, but it's part of, it was part of my presentation before the chairperson moved me off. <laughs> One of the most important things we do is entrepreneurship training. It's built into our training programs. We do realize that a lot of people are coming out at, uh, at, uh, as uh, graduates they cannot get employment in the public or private sector. So the issue of entrepreneurship becomes very critical. We got some funding from the British and also the Dutch, the Netherlands, to start what we call the tech technology and business incubation facility. The whole idea is that within that, and the World Bank also assisted us, we are setting up what we call the uh, Entrepreneurship Development Center, which will take those guys who have not got an em employment, we take them for six months and teach them how to do business. We assist them in writing project proposals and so on. There was actually a competition by the World Bank. They came in at one of these things and they gave um, the people who produced the best 10, no, 20 projects. They got the assistance of about $20,000 each. And they are now assisting through some of these uh, business ideas which they develop. So we take them through that. If somebody writes a good project proposal, assessed by the, by the private sector, we have got what we call Entrepreneurship Development Fund. The first contributor to that fund was His Excellency, our President. He put in um, uh, $100,000. UNDP put in $100,000. We are seeking funding from other sources. So that if somebody has got a good project proposal, we can give them a loan of about $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, depending on the project, how it is assessed. And then we have this technology and incubation facility, which we got about a million dollars <clears throat> from the Netherlands to set it up and our Center for Innovation and Technology Transfer. We have been training people, the managers in the uh, Netherlands and also in South Africa who have gone through the same business, these incubators, so that the people who have got good projects can be incubated for a period of, I don't know, six months, one year. They, they will be mentored, they will be given common facilities, how to handle you know, bookkeeping and so on and so forth. If they need a workshop, they will be common workshops. So this will be done in our institution. And then eventually, this is starting at the moment. We've got money, we've trained people, but we need now to see how it will work. Hopefully it will work, because we have got so many people who have so many ideas, and that way we can now create some enterprises. If somebody wants to uh, uh, assemble computers, at least we can take him through that, or repair uh, something, and so on and so forth. So these are the type of things which we're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, hearing about the... A uh, process of cultural change is very heartening, isn't it? You think about it, this isn't somebody turning a switch with technology. It's thinking about developing that human potential. Uh, the Minister's asked me to speak a little bit about the NEPAD eSchools initiative. Um, it, this is uh, something that's happening across Africa and has uh, good support from not only those companies that we were talking about, uh, and here, uh, Wench's question was a good one about the bias from the companies. Of course, there is benefit from Cisco and Microsoft <coughs> in uh, having their products there, but they are not pushing them in the same extent as you might guess they would in this country. 
There is a real, real will from the foundations associated with the companies, and I've talked with them and some of the people. Um, a colleague of mine, Michelle Selinger, was involved in uh, the UK Prime Minister's initiative for Sub-Saharan Africa that was behind setting up this NEPAD and eSchools initiative. And so I have a little bit of the inside story. Uh, one of the things I'd also like to tell you is that uh, Southern Africa has uh, had very little telecommunication infrastructure of the level that we have come to expect. And the cost that they have been paying for their telecommunication services have been outrageous in our terms. Uh, but some of that's going to change. There is a satellite uh, development uh, along with a cable network infrastructure that is on its way uh, and is working its way through uh, the southern part of the continent from South Africa and up. So that's the very good news. Along with it, um, the EPAD initiative for eSchools, as the Minister has told us, ha is already making a difference into the secondary schools and, to a lesser extent, into the primary schools. Um, it is, uh, I should say, that um, Rwanda is one of the first countries, one of the 15 to 20 countries that are taking advantage of this initiative and it's extremely impressive what they're able to do. When you think about uh, a school in Rwanda, we were already told that some of these schools are, take place, if you like, in the shade of a tree rather than in a school building. So the eSchools e initiative is about infrastructure in a very major way uh, and about developing the sort of infrastructure that will also be extremely helpful to us and to the world about making better use of energy. Some people at the uh, United Nations uh, meeting in May that was about critical success factors for the Information Society were worried about the amount of energy used by computers uh, in terms of the world's use of energy uh, and what that might mean for the environment. So having the push from Southern Africa to help us think about more ecologically friendly uses of technology and powering for the technology is really pretty important. Um, so that's what I mean about the two-way flow here, about helping us think as well as partnering with uh, places like Rwanda. I would like also to mention one other thing that I found earlier on this week. I was at the Virtual Schooling Symposium in the US. There's a very big growth in our K-12 primary and secondary education happening from distance. So there are agencies and virtual schools now set up to provide education into K-12 schools. I talked to one of them that had more of an international focus and they would be interested in providing uh, teaching lessons into uh, <coughs> schools elsewhere in the world. Um, and they have already responded uh, to situations in the US for example, in the uh, aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, one of the aid efforts has been to provide high school courses to children affected so that they won't lose out on the current scheme that they had for graduating from high school. So that's another thing that we can think about in the e-learning and in terms of the partnership. And as Clisiani mentioned, there's a lot of distance for a teacher to go to understand what the technology can do. And most of what we do there is to empower the kids to learn alongside the teachers, but the teachers to maintain uh, leadership and control of, of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I suspect that we should probably come to an end at this stage. Um, so we have a, well, one more question we have. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Asaf Anyamba. I'm a research faculty at University of America. I just happened to be down. Um, You're from what? University of Maryland. Oh, you know from Maryland. Okay. Yeah. Um, my, my question um, actually deals with the whole issue of natural resource use and environmental management. Uh, having set up this uh, university, I'm looking at your course listings here. Um, you have an area of geomatics engineering, uh, information technology, and uh, earth sciences. And what I'm wondering about is how are you beginning to put together these different areas 
to deal with the issues of natural resource management, environmental monitoring, agriculture, because obviously because of where you are located with a growing population and a diminishing resource base, how do you begin to bring together the knowledge from the different applied areas of the institute to address the critical issues that are uh, important to the sustainable use of the resources in the region or in the country? Thank you. Is a brief answer possible? <laughs> no, the, 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 the brief answer actually, the, the causes which you read there, they are not available at the moment. No. We're going to plan it. What happened was this in, um, in uh, April this year, the government decided that look, we should remove out management and we should start new causes in the area of science and engineering. And they insisted also that we should start a faculty of science and think of the new causes in, the, in the engineering. So the earth sciences and so on and so forth. So those are coming in. Obviously, the issue of sustainable development will be involved in the, in the training. So this is something which you have to think of in the future. Yeah. Yeah? The GIS. Oh, okay. Maybe the minister will talk about GIS and the most sensitive. Please. This is available in the, our national university, yes. You see, uh, at the National University of Rwanda, actually the government has requested that we establish a National Geographic Institute, you know, to, to cut around this issue, the issue of uh, uh, GIS, the Geographic Information System, but also uh, use remote sensing. Uh, you can use remote sensing to know about, to monitor your, your water, to monitor your forests. For example, Rwanda relies now, relies now on, on tourism through the three parks that we have. But these parks are shared with other countries. For example, the, the, the Virunga Park, where we have the mountain gorillas, uh, in only 600 in the world. You know. so, but these, these mountain gorillas, it has been, um, actually for the tourism, it has been, been bringing a lot of money for us. But we have to know what's happening on the side of Congo and in Tanzania and in Rwanda in terms of encroachment. So remote sensing pictures actually help to know if something is happening in terms of encroachment, actually. But also, you can know through remote sensing, through vegetation uh, analysis, and uh, uh, you can know what kind of food actually the gorillas like, what kind of vegetation actually, so that you can have a, a conservation. At the same time, we have the Nyungwe forest that we share with uh, Burundi, uh, where you have a lot of birds, actually species of birds that you've never seen, very beautiful. Uh, birds, monkeys, and other uh, plant species that, that are very, very rare. And you lack really to be able to, to do conservation with that. That's also remote sensing becomes a very important. Uh, so we have also the Akagera Park where we have uh, uh, giraffes and uh, and elephants, etc. So that becomes very important. Uh, we have put up some master's program in agroforestry and soil science, uh, master's in in, uh, in environment and and, and waters uh, and, and water. So these are some of the masters we've been putting as to it what you what we are saying. And but as this institution is being developing, this we want to to try to see how this could be integrated. There's wonderful pictures of. Uh of your country with the birds and the animals are a great place to end and I'd like to thank you all very much indeed uh, for coming and talking with us here in Iowa State uh, and for raising awareness uh, here and we look forward to continued developments. Thank you. Uh, we have put up some e-cards, we have put up some materials, anybody wants some business cards, please feel free. <laughs> These are on the table.